American Psycho was a movie that a lot of critics and producers believed was gonna bomb. In fact, a lot of actors were even warned against taking on the lead role because it could be very harmful to their careers. But that couldn't have been further from what ended up happening. As you probably know, American Psycho has become a cult classic. So, it's only fitting that we take some time to talk about 24 facts about American Psycho that you probably didn't know. Make sure you stick around to the end of the movie to find out how Christine Bale ad-libbed one of the most iconic scenes in the entire movie. Number 1. Ewan McGregor was almost Patrick Bateman. While working together on Velvet Goldmine, both Ewan McGregor and Christian Bale were up for the role of the lead character of American Psycho. At that time though, Bale had already decided that he wanted the job, and it got to the point where he actually spoke to his co-star about the opportunity they were both going after. And according to certain reports, Bale actually told Ewan to stay away from the role because it belonged to him. Number 2. 18 seconds of footage made a massive difference when it came to American Psycho's rating. Though the movie was filled with blood, gore and violence, it wasn't any of these subjects that caused the movie to almost have an NC-17 rating. NC-17 is the highest rating a movie can get and means that nobody under the age of 17 can see the movie whether they are with a parent or not. American Psycho was almost stuck with this rating due to a particularly explicit scene that involved Patrick Bateman having a threesome. In order to get the movie's rating down to an R, Mary Harron has disclosed that she had to cut 18 seconds out of that particular scene. Number 3. The This Is Not An Exit Sign referenced the ending of the novel. In the closing scene of American Psycho, as the camera panned over and focused on Patrick Bateman's face, a sign can be seen on the door behind him. The sign read, This Is Not An Exit. That was actually an homage to the novel that the movie was based on. And in the book, the final words were, this is not an exit. Number 4. Christian Bale's stepmom hated the idea of an American Psycho film. Gloria Steinman was a well-known feminist around the time that American Psycho had been filming. And she very vocally opposed the movie and claimed that it inspired violence against women. Some even believed that she tried to talk certain actors out of taking the role of Patrick Bateman. But even if that was the case, she couldn't talk Christian Bale out of the job. But you know what she could do? Become his stepmom. I'm not kidding. Steinman married David Bale, Christian Bale's father. And though I'm sure she did it out of love, I can't help but laugh at the idea that she married him to make it so that her stepson had to do as she was told and not make the movie. Number 5. It took 8 years for American Psycho to make it to the big screen. Edward Pressman purchased the rights to the film from the author of the novel in 1992, a year after Brett Easton Ellis published it. However, getting the movie made and bought to theatres would turn out to be a rollercoaster ride that was filled with multiple writers, directors, and as you know, even actors to play the lead role of Patrick Bateman. According to a 2010 Movie Line interview with the author, there was even an instance where Ellis outright told the director at the time, Stuart Gordon, that he was the wrong director for the movie. Number 6. The American Psycho movie was actually set two years before the book took place. The novel that the movie was based on was noted as taking place just after Reagan's time in the White House had come to an end, specifically in 1989. However, in the movie adaptation of American Psycho, Patrick Bateman can be seen reading as a gap from 1987, and at one point, during the end of the movie, Reagan can be seen giving a speech on the TV, meaning that Mary Harron's version of American Psycho took place two years before the book that it was based on. Number 7. The reason Timothy Bryce's business card was the worst was that he couldn't spell. One of the most iconic scenes in American Psycho is the battle of the business cards. What better way to prove that you're a true Wall Street man than showing off the wicked fun on your card? Well, during the friendly competition, Timothy Bryce's card proved to be the worst of them all. And, if you look closely enough at the wording, you will see that he even spelled acquisitions wrong. Number 8. Christian Bale was told that taking the lead role in American Psycho would be career suicide. Like a lot of managers at the time who were skeptical about the movie, Christian Bales also warned him of the risk. According to an interview that Mary Heron, the woman who ended up directing the final version of American Psycho, did with The Guardian in 2000, Christian Bale had a bunch of messages on his answering machine warning him not to take the job. However, according to Heron, that just made him more excited. Number 9. Patrick Bateman quoted the wrong Ed in American Psycho. In American Psycho, Bateman had the line about Ed Gain and quoted him by talking about wanting to treat a woman right while also wondering what her head would look like on a stick. It was a really dark scene in the movie, but it was also a misquoted scene. It wasn't Ed Gain who said that quote. Instead, it was a different serial killer by the name of Edmund Kempter. Both Kempter and Gain have inspired the creation of countless characters throughout the horror genre, including Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Number 10. Christian Bale's version of Bateman was toned down compared to his character in the novel. 
In the American Psycho novel, Bateman is actually much more racist and homophobic. Mary Harron decided rather than state these facts in her movie, she would imply them with the character, because she felt that they would be better left implied rather than stated. This resulted in a slightly more toned down version of the character. Number 11. American Psycho almost ended with a musical number. Before the movie ever began filming, one of the directors, David Cronenberg, was in the process of writing his version of the film. In that version, he had written a finale that ended on top of the World Trade Center with Barry Manilow's Daybreak playing in the background. Brett Easton Ellis also mentioned that the movie was going to wrap up with Bateman sitting in the park talking to people. By 1997, Cronenberg was removed as the director of the movie, and that idea ended up being scrapped entirely. Number 12. Christian Bale did Patrick Bateman's morning routine every day while he was filming American Psycho. If you've seen the movie, you likely know the routine. An ice pack in the morning if his face was puffy, followed by a deep pore cleanser lotion. Then a honey almond body scrub and exfoliating gel. The list goes on, and though it seems like a healthy routine, it also seems tough to stick to. Well, Christian Bale had claimed that he made sure to do his character's routine every morning for himself during the entire time that they were shooting the movie. Number 13. Patrick Bateman was based on Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. When the American Psycho novel was being written, Ellis took a lot of inspiration from Alfred Hitchcock's iconic film, Psycho. Patrick Bateman's name was actually meant to be a direct reference to Norman Bates. And though this wasn't the case for the movie or the novel, in the American Psycho TV series, it was revealed that Patrick Bateman was actually a relative of the killer motel owner. But as we said, that is not the case for the movie. Or, at least, it's never been confirmed by Mary Harron. Number 14. Leonardo DiCaprio was close to replacing Christian Bale in the role of Patrick Bateman. During the Cannes Film Festival in 1998, Lionsgate made an announcement that shocked both Bale and Mary Harron. According to them, Leonardo DiCaprio had been chosen to replace Christian Bale as the main character of American Psycho. However, Harron firmly believes that he wasn't right for the role and told the guarding that she refused to meet with him. At the time, she felt he just wasn't credible as a Wall Street guy. This is ironic considering he ended up becoming the Wolf of Wall Street. But I get it. In 1998, DiCaprio had a mean case of babyface. Number 15. Leonardo DiCaprio made a list of directors that he would work with on American Psycho. When Mary Harron wouldn't meet with him and insisted that Christian Bale play Patrick Bateman, it looked like DiCaprio didn't want to budge either. The studio began to reconsider Harron as the director and it had been reported that Leo submitted his own short list of directors they would work with if they replaced Mary. The list included names like Danny Boyle and Martin Scorsese. The studio ended up replacing Harren with Oliver Stone, who absolutely tanked the job, which caused the studio to return the movie to his proper director, Mary. Number 16. Jared Leto was on a short list of actors that were almost chosen for the lead in American Psycho. Before he was cast to play the role of Paul Allen, the 30 Seconds to Mars frontman was initially considered to play the role of the film's main serial killer. However, after some discussion, it was determined that Christian Bale was the best fit for the role, and most fans of the movie would agree with that decision. Number 17. Christian Bale inspired Patrick's personality in American Psycho on the friendliness of Tom Cruise. According to an interview that Bale did for Black Book magazine when researching ideas for how he would portray Bateman in the movie, he came across a late night interview with Tom Cruise. He was interviewed by David Letterman and according to Bale, he channeled the intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes that he saw in Tom Cruise when portraying the serial killer on screen. Number 18. Christian Bale used stick figures to brainstorm ideas for the threesome scene in American Psycho. While coming up with ideas for the scene, Mary Harron, Christian Bale and a few other members of the crew watched adult films to gain inspiration. And during those brainstorming sessions, Bale would draw stick figures doing all sorts of nefarious acts to display his ideas for what should happen in the scene. Number 19. Patrick Bateman's confession was shot multiple times because Christian Bale gave a better performance with each take. While shooting the scene in American Psycho when Patrick confessed to his lawyer, it became clear that the more takes they did, the more cappuccinos Bale would drink, which was somehow improving his performance. The scene took a total of 14 takes with each one being better and better than the last. Number 20. Swords were used for the sound effect of the business cards in American Psycho. During one of the movie's most iconic scenes, when Bateman and his co-workers were comparing their business cards, each card was introduced with a washing sort of sound. This was to enforce the fact that American Psycho was intended to be a satire of the corporate lifestyle. And to create that intense washing sound, the effects team used the slowed down sound of a sword being drawn from its sheath. Number 21. 
They had to change an iconic line in American Psycho because certain brands didn't want to be associated with the film. In the original novel that the movie was based on, Patrick Bateman's character gave an eerie warning when he said, don't touch the Rolex. But since the movie was going to be so graphic, a lot of designer brands didn't want to be associated with it. This included Rolex, which caused Harron and Bale to change the line to, don't touch the watch. Number 22. Many of Christian Bale's supporting castmates in American Psycho didn't know that he had a Welsh accent. Throughout his entire time shooting the movie, Bale spoke in the same American accent that his character Patrick Bateman had. And when the movie finally wrapped and he dropped back into his normal Welsh accent at the rap party, many of his co-workers were surprised and had just assumed that he was really American. Number 23. Christian Bale disagreed with the fact that he had been a recast in American Psycho. That's right, during the brief period of time when it was announced that Leonardo DiCaprio was going to take over the lead role, Bale didn't want to hear it. Christian Bale spoke with the Wall Street Journal and told them that he typically never went to the gym, but when he was gearing up to play Patrick Bateman, he had to. And when he got the call saying he was recast, he basically told them that he wasn't, and then kept up with his routine. And he turned out to be right, because in less than 9 months, the movie had been given back to Mary Harron to direct, and Bale was back in the lead role. Number 24. Christian Bale ad-libbed the iconic moonwalk that he used to hide the axe. Throughout the filming of American Psycho, Christian Bale ended up ad-libbing multiple moments that ended up making into the final cut of the movie. The first of which was the jump rope scene. Patrick crossing his arms wasn't originally scripted but ended up being perfect for the moment. The second and more iconic ad-lib though had to be the scene when Bateman was about to kill Paul Allen. According to Mary Harron, the moonwalk that Bale did to hide the axe before using it on Paul was completely improvised and it turned out to be pure gold for the movie. Which fact about American Psycho did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out our channel for more Flixplain magic.